everyone, Marissa B here, your host of Radiant Living, Inspiring Humanity to Thrive. Today I have with me holistic health practitioner and pregnancy and fertility coach, Glenna James, with a master's degree in complementary and integrative health sciences and many certifications in the healing arts. Glenna helps women to understand their cycles and understand how their body works. Hi, Glenna. Thank you so much for coming today. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be on here. Well, I thank you. I'd like to, first of all, ask you a little bit about, number one, how you came to the healing arts, because this is a big topic and it does affect many women, especially the fertility end of this. So how did you first come to this? Um, I always have to shout out my father, who was a nurse and in the uh, health practitioner's state and how he helped people in prison, how he helped people on the cardiac floor and then having tons of nurses in my family. I think that always inspired me, but my own journey from the time I was very little having iron issues and having tonsil issues to the point where basically it was what COVID was doing to your body. It's a cytoclastic storm. That's what my tonsils were doing and I had to get them taken out. They were gangrene. So Mm -hmm. I remember surgery as a little kid and I was afraid of it and having doctors that were nice really helped the healing process and then constantly being sick as I was older with period issues with tons of bleeding and I mean I got my tubes tied and was like okay that ain't working because they said that would work and then have to go and Mm -hmm. get an ablation and realizing none of that worked for me even the ablation didn't work fully Mm -hmm. it maybe stopped some of the bleeding but was it fully the problem it was I had a hormone imbalance That's what it was. And just naturally doing that. And then also having a general practitioner tell me I need to go and see a health coach and her being like, I don't think six months is good for you. I tell you something, you go on it. You should be a health coach. I was like, Mm -hmm. oh, oh, wow. Because of my own issues with gluten and everything like that. And I was just like, I'm going to dig deep in this. And having a bachelor's degree, I thought I was just going to cook food for everybody, healthy food. (laughs) Realizing You can't take and just feed somebody healthy foods. You actually have to coach them. You actually have to work with them. And then having herbs around me as my sisters had them when they were little, when I was little. And I was like, I always liked herbs. And I Mm -hmm. used my husband as a guinea pig. He had high blood pressure, no medicine. It was like, hmm, all these studies say this herb works with hibiscus. And then having him go get in for teeth surgery and the nurse was like, why aren't you on medicine if you say you have high blood pressure and it's in your chart? They check it. He's in extreme pain. His blood pressure is normal. And she's mm-hmm. like, what are you doing? She goes, an herb. And she goes, what? Mm-hmm. That was like like shocking because it's not just you. You start seeing it with other people. Mm-hmm. And that I started doing it with my cat. She got sick. I was like, I'm not giving her medicines for a cold. I'm going to give her homeopathic treatments. And it mm-hmm. worked. And I was like, wow. So it's like, I used my family, even my own mm-hmm. children as a guinea pig. My daughter was sick and she had a tummy ache. And I was like, I know marshmallow root works for that. And for her to even now at 14 be like, mom, teach me herbs. And yes. I started to love it because I was able to, in my master's, have a scientific backed understanding mm-hmm. of it. So it's not, woohoo, it's science backed. And I've had this problem with getting people to understand it's not always science backed here. It can be science backed somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And as long as it's science backed and it can be proven, I'm okay with it. And I think that's what differentiates me is a lot of the times the research here in the U S is coming out that overseas in Europe and other places, they were right. Mm -hmm. So it's more behind on that. So I say I'm a little woohoo in some areas, like with energy medicine, but I can prove that through physics. I Mm -hmm. wrote a book proving that plants have energy. And it's coming back just we found this year they can breathe. So it's like, I already knew that. What's the name of your book? The Energetic. Oh, my God. (laughs) Hold on a minute. The Energetic of Herbs. So it actually uses uses physics to back why pesticides are bad. Explain Mm -hmm. the photosynthesis is actually quantum mechanics. And I Mm -hmm. use research. And some of this were still very infant at the time. And I love that in my master's. That was my master's degree project. And now having stuff come out proving this, and it's like, wow. Mm -hmm. And that was just using basic physics that anybody Mm -hmm. can learn. And 
I took what I learned as my energy medicine class, which where they were talking about the physics mm-hmm. of the body to plants. And so if somebody comes to me and say, oh, energy is just woohoo. I can be like, no, I can physically explain that to you. Mm-hmm. We wouldn't have electrocardiograms. Right. Exactly. Right. Isn't so, it all electricity? Right. Yeah. So it's interesting. And they actually proved that with energy medicine, the before hormones get to the body, it's an electrical chemical first signal first. And then it's the hormonal mm-hmm. chemical next. So it's the synapses firing off energy, then a chemical signal is done. So you need one without the other. So it's very interesting. So yes, it is. And that's, that. I liked your, I liked your work. That's why I liked your work because first of all, you have, have obtained a master's in complementary and integrative health sciences. And you come from a background of healing practitioners that were in the sciences in nursing and um, you mix the two because you also use herbalism because I know you have certification in herbalism and that to some degree is science it i know people put it in the healing arts but it really is a science because after all didn't medicines come first from plants so that's the that's what i liked about how you um handle your clients and especially women that are in this phase of their life where they might have trouble conceiving because they have issues with fertility um you know they then you know how that gets then they get nervous they get upset um some will go to doctors some won't uh then the worry sets in correct and then there's further issues with pregnancy or 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 not getting pregnant and so um i thought that that was wonderful how you balance the two science and the healing arts um can you tell me a little bit about how you work with your clients with that yes um when it comes to my clients, I always look at it through a lens of balance, like you're talking about, being able to, if they have blood work, look at their blood work. I can't diagnose anybody. I'm, I can't because I'm not a doctor, but mm-hmm. I do have a diagnostic mind. Um, I watch a lot of Doctor House. I mean, every year I'll watch the same thing over and over again because I like diagnostics. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have people in my family like, why don't you be a naturopathic doctor? I'm like, I basically are. I don't want to go through the residency and be mm-hmm. under this umbrella of medicine that I don't mm-hmm. agree with. So I always look at labs and like, what is the lab mm-hmm. saying? I can't diagnose you, but I can say something's going on here. You might want to talk to your doctor about it. Mm-hmm. And one out of like 10, I'm right. You know, more than once I've been right about something and I've had clients say that's in my family history. How did you know that? Mm-hmm. Just by blood work. And I look at it on a scale with them. Mm-hmm. If they're too high, they're too high. Even if it's a percentage off and they're in the normal range, it's like, that's that day. What is about it now? And the symptoms, I look at the symptoms. Okay, if this is going on with your heart, what's your digestion like? So I look at it as a whole mm-hmm. person. So it's like, what's really going on with that? And then I try to find the healing arts as like herbalism or nutrition. That is going to be the first line. Medicine mm-hmm. will be second. So if you have PCOS, nutrition, we're going to try that. If you're actually actually trying to conceive and it's been a year and we've been working together, then let's go to medicine. And if you're a person that's going to need IVF, if you're already tracking your cycle, if you've already known what your localizing hormone is, if you've already been timing intercourse and you've already been doing all these things, if you already know this, you save yourself thousands of dollars when you go mm-hmm. to IVF because they're not running all these panels for you. You can be like, here's my chart. Here's this. I know. And it saves them tons of time through IVF. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we need to understand as women, our cycles are a vital sign. It's important. We need to, it can be used for birth control too. It can be used as effective birth control that is not hormonal. I'm not, I don't have problem with non-hormonal birth control. I have problem with hormonal birth control because Mm -hmm. of the way it matched. So if I have a client coming off of birth control, I'm like, you can't get pregnant. Let's regulate your cycles. It depends on your birth control. It can take six months to a year to get out of your Mm -hmm. system. But let's start looking at, it's called fertility awareness. Let's look at your signs. Let's see what your body's actually doing. Because it's so magical what our bodies as females do to prepare for pregnancy. And at the after you end your period, you are not fertile. So if you have intercourse, that sperm is not going to survive how the body has its own mucus to make 
it's self-fertile. So if you are outside that fertility window, you're most likely not to get pregnant unless you have a very short cycle and you ovulate right after your period. Mm -hmm. There have been women who've gotten pregnant on their periods because their cycles are so short, which is, it can be an issue. But I help my clients understand that about their bodies, Mm -hmm. their unique bodies. And if they aren't wanting to get pregnant, then we look at that as a birth control option. Mm -hmm. If they're not, and they're just wanting gut health issues, I still look at it as what is your doctor saying you have? All right. I kind of disagree. Let's look at gut issues. Let's look at candida. Let's look at all these issues. Mm -hmm. And I can actually run those tests with a practitioner's signature. So that is something I'm excited about for my, this new year is I can actually do that now through an organization that actually signed physicians sign my orders for me. I can do about 30 to 100 myself, but that I can actually run CBC mm-hmm. panels with a physician signature. So oh, I get those results. Yeah. So I can be like, I just run those tests, go take those tests to mm-hmm. your doctor and let's see what he says. So it actually saves the client money. And then it also, the doctor can just get those mm-hmm. results and be like, oh, because the patient can give them to him and be like, oh, this is what that is. Let's run another panel and see. Mm-hmm. And I am, I have no problem talking to physicians as a HIPAA certified, have my NPI. Mm-hmm. Right. That was really big for me to get because it mm-hmm. means I am listed as a natural provider and mm-hmm. that if a doctor does need to see my notes, I can give them. To right. Them securely. Right. And everything so, is secure. Yes. Right. Yes, exactly. I think that again comes from my dad who had to work in that. Mm-hmm. And I remember telling him a couple of days ago that I got my NPI and I got it like really quickly under mm-hmm. health and wellness coaching. And he goes, wow. And my mom's like, that makes you legit. I'm like, I've always been legit. She goes, yeah. this makes you legit. Yeah. So if health and wellness coaching ever has insurance pay for it, I'm already right. there. And right. I'm, I am the person when my clients, like I have pregnant women, I want to teach them about their pregnancies. So that has got me in a phase of going to be t- a doula and childbirth educator yes. and lactation educator, mm-hmm. because I want to be able to be that. So if I find that my clients have an issue with something that I can't facilitate, I will go and learn it. Mm-hmm. I will go and be specialized in it so that other clients can do that. And each client I have, I learn from. So that's how it is. It's a partnership mm-hmm. to work. So I never leave my clients. And I now do you them. see them face to face or do you do online as well or both? I do or, on, yeah. I do online and both. So if I had a local person, I would do it. They would have mm-hmm. to come here. Yes. But I do a lot of it virtually, some of it. So like with the doula mm-hmm. program, I'm going to do a virtual doula which actually facilitates if somebody is pregnant and they're married or they have a partner, Mm -hmm. I can show the partner how to actually soothe their partner. So it actually is a beautiful marry of of Mm -hmm. childbirth education and doula, and then also Mm -hmm. lactation education and just really helping women. And I work with companies. uh, I have a startup that I'm really excited about who are actually taking data points and making taking these data points to help women be able to know when there's an actual problem because we have mm-hmm. an issue with childbirth centers being shut down. Yes, so women exactly. Are having that to is go true. Places to that do is it. true. Six, six hours, four hours. Yes. Even if it's just 40. So far away. Yes. It is even if it's just 45 problem. minutes, even if it's just 45 yes. minutes for a person who's pleoclampsic. Like I that's the whole thing. Second. What hap- What happens if there's an emergency? How can you get so far away? Who's going to handle this? With preeclampsia, yes. like in my situation, it was an emergency C-section. They mm-hmm. didn't even tell me they had to take my son. I had a seizure right after he was taken mm-hmm. out. Oh, wow. So what if I had to travel 45 minutes and I did wasn't at my doctor's right away. I went to my right. doctor's appointment in the hospital right away. Mm-hmm. I was so close even after they did C-section, I had a seizure. So Mm -hmm. somebody trying to drive 45 minutes away, they would have a seizure on most likely on the way there. And that's right. If they were taking themselves. Sure. Of course. Yeah. Or a husband Mm -hmm. or a partner driving, they're having to pull off the road. Right. And then what do they have to do? Right. What do they do? Because they're not equipped to, to handle that. Yeah. Or other issues women have like, uh, they know they have placenta previa and they're on bed mm-hmm. rest, but they start bleeding and their doctor. It's even, mm-hmm. we don't even have midwives that are local. And right. some states, 
it depends on the state you're in that yes. midwives are only certified at their natural we have uh with sort of yes. midwives, we have two sets of midwives, ones that are nurses, ones that are professional midwives. Right. In the state I live in, West Virginia, professional midwives take the same license as a nursing midwives, but they don't have mm-hmm. the same licensure. They can't work in hospitals. They work in their centers or at home. Mm-hmm. The nursing midwives can work in the hospital. That's what I was going and, to ask you because you're in West Virginia. So I did have somebody on that's both a uh, licensed midwife. And she was a doula as well, but she was a licensed midwife, but out of the state of California. Mm-hmm. And she worked at a facility and she actually mentioned that every state is different. Some states don't recognize it at all. Yep. And then you have ones that are what they call lay midwives. And those are people that can be licensed or not licensed. And you have an issue there. If you don't have enough OBGYNs, we need enough midwives. I don't have the tactical knowledge to be a midwife. I would love to because it's in my family history. But Mm -hmm. I think birth work in any stage is going to help women. And Mm -hmm. we need to be that gap. And I have figured out and I don't like it because the medical system, this is why I help my clients too, because the medical system is doing what it's doing and it's collapsing I'm just going to be. Oh, it is. It's sad. It is collapsing. Well, I mean, and, and in all fairness to physicians and nurses, um, often they're no longer in control of the profession that they went, went and worked so hard to do and to provide for others. They're not in control. They have to answer to some other structure. Right. And that structure has them on a timeline and has them working quickly and you know what 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 it believes is efficiently and so that ties a lot of the hands of the healthcare professionals yeah and my father said it to me and it's something i say and i will say it forever he said it as a nurse the healthcare industry we have here is about making money on sick people it's not about prevention if it was about prevention they would have a big fuel of primary care doctors because primary care doctors are prevention are your first mm-hmm. line we have went to speciality and i as a holistic health provider am feeling like and i'm okay with it i had to become okay that we were on the first line of prevention mm-hmm. and we aren't getting paid under medicaid or insurance right right not taking place of your general practitioner but there's not a lot mm-hmm. of them like my mm-hmm. general practitioner, left general practitioner under COVID, went to go work with the health department and went and did his hematology because as a general practitioner, he wasn't making a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And he was both. So I never had to go to a hematologist. Right. There's not a lot of general practitioners. And if they are, they're overworked. So I always put myself in, I'm the front line of defense. Either somebody's going to come in with no problem or mm-hmm. they're going to come in with problems. And the doctors I'm going to work with are specialists. I would rather work with a general practitioner because I know that we can work together easily. But a heart doctor, they're not going to listen to me. I'd be like, they look like they have heart disease. They have it in their family. Why not test for it? Mm -hmm. And it's sad. So I've. I mean, oftentimes, oftentimes the testing is also dictated by not the healthcare professional who has studied, um, extensively to 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 figure out why there is an issue their hands are tied and they can't perform that test or request that test be performed because they have to answer to some other authority that generally and does they not don't have. diagnose anymore right that's another thing they stop diagnosing till they can run thousands of tests to say mm-hmm. this is what it is because of no practice i can understand that but well that to- that i can understand more if they but i don't think that they can run those tests i think that their yep. hands are tied that even if they they believe that they think they may know what it is, or they may would like to may like to run a test, some sort of diagnostic test to discover that perhaps what they believe it is is really what's happening. Sometimes they're not able to run those tests, or they need to run one type of test and not the other. So it yep. is insurance. It, it, insurance it, it, right? Will pay for well, different ones. it's a bit. It's it's a big issue. <clears throat> it's a big issue. The medical field and. Um, I do have to agree with you. The first line of defense really should be wellness before anything. I mean, not to say that we don't need the diagnostic. No, in fact, no. we are, we have, we absolutely need the diagnostic test. In fact, we're 
we have some of the most wonderful tests out there um, for for diagnosis. But uh, I think that because of the way things are going, I mean, one would want to stay well and healthy rather than being sick and figuring out how to fix that disease, right? I mean, we would rather stay healthy first. I think that that's a better way to begin. And it's not a fix. It's a Band-Aid. The way they mm-hmm. do it is these are all the symptoms. So we're going to focus on the heart. Let's say it's a heart issue. Mm-hmm. The heart, But we're not going to focus on the gut. We're not going to focus on this. We're not going to look at it as a whole person. We're going to look at it in like a machine in different parts. And it's like mm-hmm. you can't do that with our miraculous body. It works in tandem with each other. And I learned that from my father like I learned all this beautiful stuff and even now you're saying you're more educated than me how do you keep track of all that and I'm a person who I have no problem going to webinars from a chiropractor from a Mm -hmm. cardiologist to learn what the new stuff they're doing so that if I have a client who's like I just took this medicine or this doctor does this performance new surgery on me I understand what the heck they're doing Mm -hmm. and what the like with gluten intolerance what they're doing with that because it makes me a better practitioner. And mm-hmm. I believe that people in the holistic health community, I have found this, we always keep up to date. We're always mm-hmm. taking some type of class. We're always doing that, which is no different than the same doctors that have to do mm-hmm. it. Even nurses have to take right, this. Right, 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 right. It's no different. Um, I'm happy we don't have this big license board over us. It does make us free. But we, if you look at it, we all stay within the same ethical mm-hmm. guidelines, which is do no harm. It's it's in my master's, we actually had to write our own Hippocratic oath mm-hmm. and explain that. And I have mine and it made my teacher cry because I talked about doing no harm, learning from my mm-hmm. clients, being compassionate to them. Um, even if they do something they ask me about and I say, no, that's not good don't do that and they do it anyways if they come back and tell me I'm going to be like okay can you explain to me why do you Mm -hmm. understand why I didn't I said no to that but it's them they want to do it Mm -hmm. and I've had clients that be like oh I did that what do you think I'm like here's the reason why I said no here's the actual research and I'll give them the research Mm -hmm. to read and I've had them come back be like oh thank you I'm like yeah thank you for understanding why I said no I know it's your decision to do that but that's very dangerous because I also have a liability thing, like anything you do, I'm not liable because I'm just suggesting things. It's up to you to take them. And I think we need that. And I really love that I learn from my clients and I really love that I continue to get educated. Like I just finally finished my meditation and mindfulness uh, mm-hmm. teacher's guide so I can guide people with meditation and mindfulness. I've been practicing it for years, mm-hmm. but I wanted to make sure that it worked. I wanted to make sure that, right, that you could understand. Right. Yeah. And that you and could that, provide it to others. Yeah. Yeah. And now I do children's yoga. I just got my children's yoga teacher training. I'm about to do prenatal yoga and which are very I, different. If which are very different. No, they are very different for for uh, infants and for children, very different. Mm-hmm. But I can even do it all the way up to the teenagers. So, mm-hmm. you know, and things are more, but it's all the same poses. It's it's different mm-hmm. modifications you learn. Mm-hmm. So I'm hoping that the prenatal yoga will, will, can be also used for fertility yoga. Mm-hmm. So I'm slowly going to start learning that, but I'm not going to be a yoga teacher. I'm not going to register as a yoga teacher. Right, it's right, something... right. You just want it for yourself is in your tool and to add it for your yeah, clients. And, then, mm-hmm. and there's other things I hope to do in the next couple of mm-hmm. years. I hope to go and be a naturopathic physician, which is not a naturopathic doctor. It's a naturopathic right. physician. You don't have the residency attached to it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's probably where I'll stop is mm-hmm. that, but I do see myself continuing to learn more continuing to um sit and watch different webinars and and mm-hmm. summits to learn from professionals in mm-hmm. that field like functional medicine i don't want to be a functional medicine practitioner naturopathy would be my way to go but mm-hmm. i do use functional medicine techniques right because i love that so i think it's encompassing with everything with my client mm-hmm. um 
<laughs> I know that's a long-winded speech. Now, with all of that, you also have a podcast that yes, you I do. Run. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Because I know now you said you've written a book. Now you have the podcast as well. Let let me hear what's the name of the podcast? The Holistic Glenn Podcast. And let, tell the audience a little bit about that. What exactly are you doing with the podcast? Um, my podcast is my way of networking with other holistic health practitioners, other practitioners, one for them to get their practice out there, but also I say it's my voice behind my blog. It's where they can hear me. They can hear the people that I'm facilitating around me because if I can't help someone, I know people right. that can. Need, yeah. Yeah. It's a network. That's really what it is. It's a network. And that's, we're all in the healing arts and that's really what we should be here for. Right. That's, that's wonderful. And that's what you do. Right. So you, you can provide services to your clients that you might not be able to do, but you know where they can go. And there are people that are heart centered. And my whole approach is it's patient centered and it's also personalized. So this client over here might need these hormone tests, but these clients over here don't. Mm -hmm. So it's very personalized, but it's all patient centered as well. And I've had clients where I've gotten a call for them. I've only got two questions out. Mm -hmm. What did you do this week? What, what did you add? They tell me, and then they're asking me questions. Mm -hmm. And then me at the end being like, okay, I recommend you do this for the next time. And I'm just sitting there like, I haven't even, I have like three questions here. I got it. <laughs> And have to learn that I didn't need to ask that third one. They offered it to me in that mm -hmm. situation. And how with that, it's made it easier for me because they are open. And how much information I get from that. And mm -hmm. how much I had just the last client tell me that I'm empathetic. And it was beautiful that I'm, I'm listening. And even though they've done something that wasn't recommended, they still come back to me and ask me mm -hmm. if that was right. And I was just like, I told you my opinion. Now you got to, you're asking for it again. Now I got a little scared. And I was like, here's the reason why. And I asked her, I said, I have a colleague that does this stuff more. Can I consult with her? And I just told her, I was like, hey, I have a client who's doing this. And I disagree. I told her the reason why. And I gave her some, can, I know you have more resources. Can you hand them to me? She did. And by the time I came back with that, the client was like, oh, okay, thank you. And was like, I won't do that again. I'll do this, mm -hmm. what you expect. Right. And being able to have that to when I don't feel comfortable, even though I know I'm right, having someone else that's specialized, more specialized in it mm -hmm. to be like, am I saying the right thing here? And mm -hmm. based on research. And I was happy that the client understood that, took the links and read it and understood and was like, oh my God, thank God I didn't hurt myself. I'm just like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was aromatherapy based. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, please don't drink essential oils. You know, mm -hmm. don't. And I'm just like, you're not supposed to, but people in certain communities are. And it's like, oh, so it's that debate between science mm -hmm. and what they think is okay. And it's like, I'm staying on this side, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it's hard when you have, it's like with herbs. Why are you taking that herb? You're pregnant, you know, <laughs> because I read it in a book where my friend yes. told me, okay, your friend told you, but I'm an herbalist. Don't do that. So it's like mm -hmm. that. Right. Cause there are some that could be harmful. Yeah. And it's like, but my friend told me who just sells these products. I'm like, that's what I have an issue with the healthcare field. Mm -hmm. In holistic health there are people out there who have no certifications i'm not saying you have to no knowledge they just learn it from the internet and they just tell everybody that's why when i write my blogs i have researched mm -hmm. every single thing and i will put on there can i take when you're pregnant so that people mm -hmm. understand that because i feel like people that just get all these herbs and say they're herbalists and teach their friends right. about it is bastardizing actual herbalism mm -hmm. and causes harm and that's why people mm -hmm. like me and you we have to worry about getting sued we have to have that liability and when you're a small business you're not going to get an insurance company to to cover you even a lim right. li limited liability company only is allowed so much right right and well it does make it bad it does make it bad for others that have um done the studying done the certifications it does make it bad um i know that that's a concern 
for a lot of people in the healing arts. You know, that is a concern because you want to make sure that really it's all about the clients and you want to make sure that the clients stay safe, even though sometimes they do their own thing. They don't necessarily listen to the healing, to the healing arts practitioners. They don't listen, you know, they do their own thing and they can harm themselves in that way. But you want to make sure that no harm is coming to them from you. Yeah. As a practitioner. Oh, now yes, is yes. your blog on your website? Because yes, how does one how, so how does one find out about the about your um podcast? Is that also on the website where so people can listen to the podcasts? Yeah, my podcast and my blog is on my website, and also my blog uh web podcast is on Spotify and Apple. We can find it. Um, and I have my services on there. I'm about to launch my natural pregnancy childbirth education, which since I've had two kids, I've read a lot of books. I know about pregnancy. I've already took tons of classes and certifications. It's just, mm -hmm. I feel the need to get a childbirth education certification mm -hmm. to be able mm -hmm. to facilitate that more. And I'm excited that while I launch this program, I will be able to be taking mm -hmm. these certifications to kind of go with it. So every new thing I learn, I can mm -hmm. add it to things and it will grow. And I want to see women postpartum. I and yes. I hope to when I do that, where it's not just their pregnancy, they come second trimester. And we talk about that. And then we have one meeting at the end when they have the baby, because if mm -hmm. they have any concerns with lactation, I can help them with that. Mm -hmm. But I'm just an educator. If they need a lactation consultant, I know people that can do that. Mm -hmm. So it's that Mary between. And I'm even focusing on teenage moms. I'm doing a certification mm -hmm. within a doula ship for that because even though teenage moms are not so high on the rise anymore, they still happen and they are vulnerable at that time. Oh, and I yes. want to be able to facilitate that because I know from my history, seeing friends of mine, they had, they were teenage moms and they had bad deliveries and grief with a lot of miscarriages going mm -hmm. on and a lot of stillbirths that's happening. I want to be able to facilitate that in the grieving process. And as a very mm -hmm. sensitive person, that's going to be hard for me, but it will teach me boundaries. It will teach me to be able to facilitate someone's healing journey in that. Mm -hmm. And the infant mortality rate and the yes. maternal mortality rate is going down. And I feel this call to be, to help stop that in any form and I hope if there was a OBGYN listening or a midwife will reach out to me to be part of that network I have so that we can facilitate that. So babies aren't lost and women aren't lost. And it's sad. Mm -hmm. We live in a country where we have all the science and it feels like we're living in a third world country from pregnancy. And we're supposed to care about mm -hmm. the unborn babies and we'll, And it's just mind blogging. We say we care. We don't want this to happen to them. But you can say one thing and from politics mm -hmm. and all this, but you're, the way you're putting it out there isn't. Mm -hmm. But in all fairness, we have to say that um, we have to say that not every person that's expecting a child seeks services. So yeah, that's often that's it. That's another issue altogether. Um we know services are spotty, especially in certain areas, certain areas more than others. But then there are those that, for whatever reason, whether they don't know about it, they've not learned about it, for whatever reason, they don't seek services. So that is also a problem. Um, yep. You know, so that that has to be said as well. I mean, the system is clearly broken in the medical in the medical field. So, you know, will will it change? I'm not sure. Will it ever recognize the healing arts will it ever recognize alternative or holistic therapies i don't know there are many doctors that are now integrative doctors there are medical doctors but they do integrative medicine um i'm happy to see that that's happening you know will that be common i'm not sure but yeah. you know we have to like you said we have to have services out there i mean we know in the healing arts that we're always studying, we're always doing. I mean, not me, because I'm licensed, I have to have certain um, classes every every year, every two years, depending on what, this, what the license is or the certification is. Um, but we know that people in the healing arts are always 
looking for um, what they can learn, you know, that learn more in their field, uh, expand their knowledge. It's just, that's just the area that we're in. And it seems said. like sometimes we're overqualified. Like if I was a doctor, I would have all this overqualified. And that's what surprises me. And in a medical doctor has a bachelor's degree. And then sometimes they get their speciality and their master's and in, in their mm-hmm. doctorate. But a lot of them who just go into be general practitioners, they have less than what I do. And I have a little bit more than they do. I love them. Even my dad has talked to me. He goes, yeah, that's why they listen to me. I've had nutritionists who come from my son. And I was just like, you're wrong. And they're like, oh, I didn't know that. And they're like, okay, I'm not going to be a nutritionist anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and be a holistic. I was to keep my nutritionist license, Mm -hmm. but I'm going to go and be a holistic practitioner. I've had those and I've met those that have already done that because they learned about it. Mm-hmm. And it really changed my perspective on nutritionalists and how having friends now and colleagues have said, yeah, I changed over. And that mm-hmm. even insurance don't pay for nutritionalism a lot anymore, or nutrition therapy. So, oh, right, right, right. The, the insurance. Well, but you know, it's sad to say the insurance doesn't pay for a lot of things. And even yep. the professionals that can file insurance don't necessarily get paid properly either so it isn't yep. really all it's cracked up to be whether nope. you know what i'm saying whether whether you can or cannot uh file insurance it's not all it's cracked up to be I because oftentimes yes in fact i remember many years ago um a family member had a doctor it was in the state of new jersey and uh, and he was a licensed medical doctor and he had been practicing for years and he had what he called his wall of glory and many, many, many of the checks that would come from the insurance company were so low that he would just paste them on the wall because they were absurd. So he never cashed them because they were ridiculously absurd. And so he actually had a wall of glory because for his services, those checks were terrible. And uh, and and I mean like a dollar ten. <laughs> That's what I mean. That's why he had a wall of glory. So, you know, insurance is not always necessarily um, yep. everything that people think it is um it's the services that we need to provide for people it's the ser- the services that we have to provide that we really should be providing um in the most efficient way for yeah. people and we have yeah. to give them also an opportunity to select for themselves really if they feel that they want to go to someone um that only uses herbs then that's where they should go it yeah. should be something that's their decision well, Yes. Yep. Medicine isn't always, shouldn't always be pushed. And I think that's where people like me and you and other people can be in contact with the medical field and with doctors and be like, a patient wants to do this. Here's all this and be able to do that. And the doctor not be like, no, 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 no. That's, that's not what the science says. And be like, here's all this science, but it's not Mm -hmm. back here. It doesn't matter if it's not back here. Mm -hmm. If it's been peer reviewed somewhere else, it's been peer reviewed. Mm-hmm. And I love- but you know, in all fairness, oftentimes I think that doctors, medical doctors, do they really have a lot of time to read everything? I mean, I read a lot of journals, but do they have the time to read the journals? If you don't have time to read them, you may not necessarily know what your peers are reviewing and what um, is the latest out there or what the white sheets say. You know, it's 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 a it's a fine line because after doing all, that. we have to say they are overworked. They are overworked, yes. many of them, right? Overworked. Um, understaffed, especially nowadays, post pandemic. Oh, a lot of people yes. don't want to right now. A lot of people don't want to be in the medical field, or some in, even in the healing arts, for that matter. Many people don't want to go back to that. They're a little concerned. So, it, you know, we are we are finding that as well. I think people in, like me yeah. who during COVID was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. They're telling us to wash our hands. But then they're telling us to bleach everything. That makes no sense. Why is bleach the only way to kill it on surfaces? Vinegar does the same thing. It's an acid. Why is that the same thing as washing your hands? What, what? And they're like, people are like, no, bleach everything. It's like, if you listen and read what they're saying mm-hmm. about washing your hands, you don't need to bleach everything. And I was worried because the way that chemical sensitivity is going up, that people are going to have problems. And it's being proven. Yeah. Well, many people, people believe that. Yeah. Many people believe that bleach. Now. Yeah. 
but they believe like, that bleach kills everything you know it's and it's also i think a lot of the advertising you know that has gone on with one product over another we know that right we know the the how how advertising marketing works you know so and i think in fear when when people are fearful you know they're running for um everything not just one product maybe 10 products because they're in fear yeah so and that's i believe health yeah. practitioners like me and you who stayed on that side of it got kind of looked at weird we got looked at weird like wait a minute that's going against this and this and this and we're not telling you not to go with the cdc we're just saying think for a minute you know because you're doing all that you're going to cause harm to yourself and now why is there asthma rates going up why are these and it's like mm -hmm. you know think about it for a minute well chemicals right chemicals in general are no good whatever that chemical may be right i mean yeah. we know that now more and more so you know when you're bombarding your system with chemicals what damage is it doing? Yep. What long-term damage is it doing? You know, and, uh, but again, fear makes people do a lot of different things. Sometimes you couldn't tell anybody, you know, don't do this or don't do that or, or, or use this instead of that, because really who would, how many people would listen, you know, when they're in fear, they're going to do what they feel is right for them. Yeah. And it's a lot of education. I think in the healing arts, like they're saying, we constantly educate ourselves, but we're also educators mm -hmm. as well. And that's something I had to really burn down. Like, I don't want to teach anybody, but I've had to learn that that comes with coaching is being a teacher. And mm -hmm. I think I have a knack for it. I couldn't do it in school or in a college, but I think I can do it in a one-on-one -on -one setting or group setting. Well, I mean, you're proving that you have a lot of clients. You're a busy person, especially in the in the um, fertility and pregnancy. Um, um that's yeah, new. new. So I'm yeah. waiting to get clients. COVID kind of tanked my clients on building. Them right. Back up. Because of the, because, right. Because no one on one and it had, right. But I mean, in West Virginia, I'm sure you're very busy because, uh, and I'm sure that it will now that things are going back, you know, people are always looking for the services. But so now tell me, how can people get in touch with you? You have the website, you have the podcast, you have the blog, the blog and the podcast can be seen on the website. So I want to make sure that I have um, all your information in the description box, especially um, clients in your area, because oh, yeah. uh, I'm I sure see. that they want to know. How I, to see see. I mean, I know you do. Yes, you see clients yeah. all over. And of course, you're on you're online. You're um, you you use um, the Internet. So but I know that the people near you definitely want to have information. So I want to make sure it's all out there to provide okay. to the. Um, and what's your website? Can you tell us the website? Theholisticlynn.com. And you can find me on Facebook and on Instagram at The Holistic Glenn by Glenna James. Yes. And I will put those on there too. Um, I will make sure that the audience knows where to get a hold of you. And Glenna, I want to thank you so much for coming on. I know we could talk about this forever. My God, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Once again, I tell all the all all the people that come on, all of my guest speakers. I mean, we're only just beginning to uh, to scratch the surface with all these topics. I think that they're... Uh, needed to be out there more and more and for for people to know where that they can where they can get the information if they choose you know that they have the right to have all this information on hand so again thank you so much for coming and i want you uh thank you have a wonderful holiday and have a great evening thank you. you bye glenna bye <laughs>